Okay, uh, first, congratulations on your military. You are doing very well. Thank you for doing your work. Today's, uh, in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about car falling models, which is the model that I plan to talk about before the midterm, because it's very important to simulation. So today's lecture is very useful for you if you want to do some research related to uh, car movement or any micro scale research, this will be useful. I want to talk about three things today. First, I want to talk about the car falling concepts, the basic concepts. Then I will talk about the literature, literature review, I mean the models that were reported or mentioned in the literature. Then I want to talk about the applications of these models. I will talk about vSIM, Pramix, and Amazon. But I won't talk about uh, transims because transims is using cellular automata, like I mentioned. And I will, I'm going to talk about cellular automata probably in the next lecture. So, uh, Chris, do would you mind uh, closing the door for us if it's too hot, Chris? Oh, yeah, there are two Chris's. <laughs> so. The first concept is car falling. What is car falling? This is the figure that shows you what it is. In the uh, in figure one, in the first sub figure, this is a follow car. This is a lead car, and they have spacing. If this spacing is less than this minimum spacing, then this car will decelerate. If this uh, spacing is too big then the car will accelerate. So that's the basic idea of car falling. In order to study uh, car falling, we first have to know the relationship between the speed, the current travel speed, and the maximum acceleration a vehicle can get. The, max, the maximum acceleration is limited by the vehicle's current speed. So if you drive faster, the, your maximum acceleration will be lower. He, this is a figure showing you for different uh, car types. When the speed increases, the maximum acceleration it can get will decrease. And the relationship is linear. You can refer to the, this paper. This is another, another figure I want to show you. So this axis represents the speed, the travel speed. And this is, the, is still the maximum acceleration. acceleration. This curve represents the maximum possible uh, acceleration that the vehicle can get. And this curve represents the faster than average travelers, the drivers. So this is the acceleration you, your vehicle can have. But the fast drivers will use this curve, and the slower drivers will use this curve. Then as an average driver, this is probably your acceleration. So three curves. This is the the vehicles. This is restricted by the vehicle, and these are three curves that represent the typical driving pattern of people. After understanding the concept of car falling, let's talk about why we need it. So, can anyone think of? Why we need car falling models in micro simulation? Any reason we need it? I propose three reasons. The first reason is we want to move vehicles efficiently. We want to move vehicles ahead, forward. That's the first reason. The second reason, we also want to avoid collision. When a vehicle, when a leading vehicle changes speed, we want the following vehicle uh, to avoid collision. So the vehicle in front of me, if it is braking, I will have to brake too. The third reason is we want to replicate realistic vehicle movements. And these are the reasons why we need the car falling model. Now I have a small quiz for to you to warm up. First question, will the car falling model affect road capacity? Yes. Why? Because when the 
then you will have less cars on the road for a certain minute. Uh, could you say that again? Because if you have a spacing within a, within the road, then you will have the for certain it will only carry less amount of cars. I see. So you were you are mentioning the headways, the headways, the spacing between vehicles. Now my question is, if this spacing is fixed. I can still choose among a lot of car following models, which I will, I'm going to introduce. But before I introduce them, just imagine if the headway is constant, then will the different car following models affect the capacity? We know the average headway. This one doesn't change. But I choose different car following models. So some, what, what's, your, what's your idea? Headway is time headway or space headway? Uh, let's say both of them. Let's say the vehicles are traveling uh, at a constant speed, or not constant speed, but the speed variation is small and the average speed is, is fixed. And we assume the headway is, is fixed, no matter speed headway or, or uh, space headway. Then will the car following model affect capacity? Probably not. No matter which car volume model you choose, if the headway is fixed, um, if we assume the vehicles are traveling on a normal segment, like freeway segment, the capacity will not be changed. That's the conclusion. It will not be changed. And that brings another question. How can you validate a car volume model? If I have different car volume models, and how can you say this one is better than the other one? We can no longer use the macroscopic data to validate this. So in the future, if you read a paper and it says, I have new car following model, and then you first go to the last page to see how it's validated. If they use macroscopic data saying, OK, this can replicate the volume, speed, density relationship, that is, that is wrong. Any car following model that were validated using the macroscopic data where it has to be uh, carefully uh, suspected. So in order to validate the car following model, we, the only way is to collect car following data, to collect car following data, not the volume, nor the macroscopic data. Understand this? So I'm showing you the, the early stage of data collection. In the earliest experiment, they used two cars. The, the uh, researcher used two cars. This is the following car, and there is another car in front of it. They are connected by a wire wheel. So this is a wheel. So uh, they are connected by a wire. By measuring the length of the wire, they can immediately get uh, the distance between vehicles. And at the same time, the speed of the vehicles are recorded. And that's how they collected data to create, to validate their car falling model. Understand this? But that's the early stage. This is 1958. This is a paper published in 1958. Uh, in current days, current days, we don't need to use this old technique again. We can use GPS, which is more convenient, much more convenient, and less expensive. So nowadays, the car following models are validated by GPS data. Because when you use GPS, you can record your velocity and your uh, position at any time accurately. And that can provide you with all the data you want. In order to analyze the car following model, I want to introduce a very important and simple tool called the time space diagram. I would like to use uh, to first introduce to you what time space diagram is. It's very, very simple. So at a certain time step, here is a vehicle. This is a, this is a road. This is a vehicle. This is another vehicle. After a certain time, this vehicle becomes travels to here. And that vehicle travels to here. Assuming this is a road, and I move at 
offset the uh, vehicles by the time difference. So this is time. This is <coughs> the distance to uh, or the offset or displacement. Then if I connect this line, connect this line, this line will represent a trace of the vehicle. Is it clear? If we connect it, this line represents how the vehicle moves along the time. Because the vehicle has only one uh, direction to move, it can only move forward. And that's why we can use the axis, this axis to represent the displacement of the vehicle. This is the simple case, and it is more complex case to often see. Let me explain what it is. This is the road network. We have four intersections, and each intersection is represent is controlled by a traffic signal. So within this time period, this red bar represents a stop signal. And then we have a red a green signal. Then we have a red signal. So these red bars are representing the stop signals. And initially, at, no, at this time, time point, we have a vehicle here, here. Then it travels to the, the first intersection, which is here. Then it uh, stopped by the stop signal. So it's straight. Now it's a horizontal line. Then after the, the red signal finishes, it resumes traveling. Then you uh, encounters another stop signal. And this pink line represents the vehicles that come that uh, going in the different way, in the opposite way. Opposite direction, I say. So we have the traces of six vehicles northbound and seven vehicles southbound. Do you understand it? Any question about it? This is the path diagram, the tool we are going to use in the next slide. Now, this is the data we got in 1958. This is the car positions, this is time. In order to uh, view it in the, in the more, more convenient way, I mean, like, like this,